What's up, modern steaders? Today we got to work on the outdoor pig pasture. Woohoo! A little funny story this morning. I was out doing my chores, moving the chickens and stuff. The sliding glass door was open to cool off the house. And while I'm out on one side of the yard, I hear a big old yell. We're like, oh, the pigs touched that fence again. And then Olivia comes to the window. Dad, was that the pigs? And she starts laughing. I'm like, yep. Yeah. The pigs will touch the electric fence every once in a while. They'll learn their lesson, and then they'll learn to respect it. And when we have them out in pasture in a few days, they will respect it, and they won't go near that fence. If you guys didn't see the video on how we're training our pigs to electric fence, I'll post that video right here. Let's go grab some tools and get ready to go do some work. Oh, here it is. We need a hammer. You want to go out? It's kind of hot out there, isn't it? I've been thinking quite a bit today. I got an email last night. I think that's what sparked it. We have some barred rock chickens we're trying to sell, and we have them listed on Craigslist as organic pasture-raised chickens. And they've been raised on pasture their whole life, fed organic feed. The lady said, this might seem a little odd, a little pushy, but do you have receipts for the organic feed? And I wrote back, no, we don't have too many receipts for the organic feed. I don't always ask for a receipt. So I went in the basement, I went, you know what? I got a huge stack of organic chicken feed bags. So I took a picture of them, sent them off, and then I got a reply back from her, she wants the chickens. The chicks, they're back. <laughs> oh, did you hear that? That was a pig touching the fence. Woohoo! Um, she wants the pullets. We have 10 of them. So it's a good thing, but it got me thinking. I really don't talk about why we do this. So let's work and talk at the same time, and I'll let you guys know why we do everything we do here at Lumna Acres. There's a lot behind it, there's a lot to it. You know, it takes a little bit of dedication to get up every day, feed your animals, move them on pasture, but there's a reason we do it. I'm gonna put in a few posts. We'll keep these ones for corners, and we'll probably put more of them throughout the perimeter fence too. All we're gonna do today is we're gonna make a big perimeter fence here, and then if we need to, we can put the fence in between to make it smaller paddocks. We'll have to see how much fence we need. We'll get the pigs in here to work, and then we'll see if they can do the big area and work it like we want them to, or if we've got to put them back into a smaller area. I'm not going too nuts with pounding these into the ground as long as I get them to the bottom wedge that's like on there. I'm not going to get it all the way in because you got to remember, I'm going to be taking these out in October, maybe some sooner, depending on how the pigs work this area. I'm just pacing and counting. This is all damaged when we had that microburst come through and hit this area of town. If you guys didn't see the damage that that caused, I'll link that video right here. Over here we're going to go on this tree, that tree, that tree. I think we can probably put one post in between those two pine trees and call that span good. Good afternoon, Mr. Biggs. I thought you were sleeping. Now, I don't mind putting insulators on some of my pine trees and hardwoods, but I'm not going to nail or screw in insulators to my apple trees. The pigs will have some apple trees to root around. We're gonna keep some out of it, and we'll see how they fare. What trees do better, the ones inside the pig pen? Got 
one pole here and one pole over here. We'll use this for our gate. We'll use this to get the pigs from the winter chicken coop into pasture. I know, I said we were gonna work and talk, but I didn't think you'd be able to hear me over all this banging. Now we can have a little chat. Boy, that lighting is terrible. There we go. Find a good spot, we can have a little talk, and we can discuss why we like the modern homestead. I lied, I got the fence and stuff. We can do some more work and we can chat because this part is quiet. Find the T-post ones for now. We got an open bag. We do. Loose ones too. Even if, if that's as organized as you get, is putting everything in a box and labeling it, it saves you a lot of headache looking for everything next year. So again, we're just gonna go like ankle high, a little bit over ankle high. And then right around knee high. And you can always move these if you need to afterwards. So growing up, I was always a junk food junkie. I always had a sweet tooth and I still battle that, I think because I used to eat so many sweets. And we used to go out to eat quite a bit. You know, box foods, we'd have TV dinners every once in a while, that was a special treat. Going to McDonald's was a special treat, you know what I mean? That junk food was a special treat. You could only have a little bit or here and there because it was special. I don't think we should look at it that way and I think that's kind of a mind shift change we gotta get into. It's not a special treat, but I kind of digress there. So we, we always ate processed foods, not terribly. My mom cooked, we cooked, and that's how I learned to cook. One night a week, everybody in the family had to cook dinner. Friday nights was my dad's night, so we'd go out to dinner. We'd have boxed macaroni and cheese, we'd have boxed rices and stuff like that. And I struggled my whole life, as, long as, as far back as I can remember, was some sort of anxiety. I wasn't diagnosed with it until I was in high school and I took prescription drugs and that wasn't any good. Through high school I moved up to Northern New Hampshire on my own, did it, I quit smoking, I got anxiety really bad. But what got me out of it was changing my diet. I never thought that would have a huge impact on my anxiety levels, but it has. So the biggest reason we do what we do here is for food and it's not just food because we want to be food self-sufficient so if there's a collapse or something we know how to grow all of our own food that's part of it and that's kind of like a bonus but the reason we do this is so we can have healthy food we want to feed our animals organic if we can and if you can't feed your animals organic get them out on pasture and grass you want your animals eating grass bugs the natural diet they're going to have more omega-3 fatty acids and the whole fat makeup of an animal that eats grass and pasture and bugs is completely different than a confinement farm raised pig or cow. Those fats aren't good for you. The fats from a pasture raised animal, whether it's their eggs, the meat, the milk, is really good for you. A lot of scientific proven stuff. I'm not into all that, but I'm not, I don't get focused on that. My big thing is how I feel now. I'm not gonna lie, I'm 36. Think. Yeah, I'm 36 and I feel like I feel better than I did when I was in my 20s, believe it or not. I used to have aches and pains in my body. I wouldn't want to get up off the couch and do stuff. Now I have more energy. I can work longer. I can work harder. My body, my joints aren't all in aches and pains. I don't get all anxious, but I don't have the anxiety anymore. Now question for you. This is one of those questions that keeps me up at night thinking. So. We feed our animals organic and non-GMO. But if you can't feed organic or non-GMO, if you have your animals out on pasture, does it matter? Pasture and grass is loaded with chlorophyll. So chlorophyll is a huge detoxifier. So will that combat the effects of GMOs and pesticides and all non-organic stuff? That's one of those things that's got me up at night, late at night thinking, going, hmm, the creator created this place. He knew everything that was gonna happen. I bet he knew that we would be messing around with GMOs and DNAs and there's gotta be a way to combat that. So is that pasture and chlorophyll? Or am I just crazy? Leave it in the comments below.
I don't believe you can find a lot of this high quality food anywhere. And that's why we raise it ourselves. And if you can find it, it's pretty darn expensive. So I'd rather grow it myself, put the time in, and that way I know how they are raised. The outdoor kitchen, that's what we're gonna be using that for too. We're gonna have an antique wood cook stove out there. We're gonna have it set up so we can do more of our own animal harvesting and we can do our canning and meat preserving out here. One of the great things about having an outdoor kitchen is you can keep the mess outside and not in your house. We've got a concrete slab, so that way if we make a mess, we can hose it down. In your house, you don't want to do that. If you got your pressure canning going, you're not doing it in your house and heating your house up. Because most of the time when you're canning, it's in like August and September when it's really hot out still, and you don't want all that heat in your house. So the outdoor kitchen, you save that. And also, if we want to be able to harvest our own pigs, we can do that with the outdoor kitchen. We'll be better set up for processing our pigs. I'm also gonna put a cold smoker on the outside of it, so that way we can smoke our hams and our bacon. That's the goal there. So Sorry I don't do good talking about this stuff, guys. It's kinda out of my comfort zone, and that's, I guess, why I don't share so much of why we're doing this. But it's important to me. There's a big reason why we're doing it. It's for health. And that's one of the things I hope that this channel can do, is it can inspire you guys to do it too. I'm just an average Joe doing it. You know, figure it out, experiment. It, if you mess up, who cares? That's why I, I try to show my failures on camera. That's how we learn. Think about it, if you didn't learn from failures or if you failed when you were younger and you didn't do anything, you wouldn't even know how to walk. A baby's starting to walk and they fall down. Do you say, hey, you little turd, you stink at that. Don't try to walk again. You say, oh, don't feel bad, Johnny. Get up and do it again. Those are some awesome first two steps you took. Think about it. How much excited do we get when we see little Johnny or little Kathy or little Olivia take their first two steps? They take one or two steps and they fall and they cry. But we encourage them to get back up. And that's what we need to do with all this stuff with this channel, with whatever, encourage each other. Oh man, I grew zucchinis for the first time this year and they all died or groundhog ate them or they got bottom rot or they, whatever, they, they got pottery mildew and they died, we didn't do good. Oh, you stink, don't ever do that again. No, try it next year, grow double. So if one doesn't work, you got more. I mean, we, we're experimenting here, you guys see it. We got where the pigs were last year and that's in shade. There's been a lot of people who said, you're not gonna grow anything in that garden, it's in shade. You guys see how good it's doing. It's jamming, and just wait till Friday's update. I bet you it's gonna be jamming even more. We got potatoes in the potato tower. If they're not doing good, hey, we don't have any more in a different spot this year, but we'll learn, and next year we'll do better. Hope I'm not losing you guys with this video, but it's just something I've been thinking a lot about lately. It's why we do it we do it for the food we do it for the health we lost quite a bit of it if you guys didn't see the talk that we did with off with doug and stacy i'll link that video here but you know there's a big generational gap we lost quite a bit of knowledge from probably my great great grandparents or my great grandparents there's a lot of stuff that was lost there's a lot of food preservation and health stuff that we lost i mean we can't cure we can't cure bacon and meats the way we used to because the fat's different. But if you raise pasture-raised animals, the meats are different and you can cure them the old way. Like we'll be doing here with Hand Hewn Farm in October. That's another reason why you have to have pasture-raised animals. The fat's different and you can air cure your meats. We'll be learning more when Hand Hewn Farm gets here. So why are you guys modern steaders? Or why do you want to be a modern steader? Do you do it for your health? Do you do it for, to raise animals? Why do you do it? Do you do it to save money? I'll leave it in the comments down below. I'd love to know why you guys watch the channel or why you are homesteaders and why you want to be. And also, what got you, what got you into wanting to know about your food? For me, it was anxiety and other health issues. For Gina, it was after she had Olivia, she got really sick with some complications. Um, I was talking to a guy from Wright's Farms who makes a bunch of poultry equipment, and he got into it because he had some health issues also. And he believes it's all to do with food, and he loves our channel because we're showing people how to raise and grow their own food, and we got to talk in me and him. And He's like, the message has got to get out. This is why we sell the products we do, so people can raise their own food, 
and take care of it themselves and have some really good nourishing foods. So why do you guys care about what you eat? I'd love to hear that too. Everybody has a story and I think we need to get the stories out there. So you have X, Y, Z and it's from the food you ate. People need to know that. Not that, oh, I got this and this is just happened. It doesn't just happen. The illnesses out there nowadays that are from our food. Now, I know a lot of people are gluten intolerant and have a gluten sensitivity. I'd love to know. This has always just pondered my mind. Do you, is it a gluten issue or is it the way we process our gluten nowadays? So right before we harvest our wheat, we spray it with Roundup to dry it out. And then the plant is loaded with Roundup. So are we allergic to the Roundup that's in the plant now? And we harvest it and then we dry it right away with propane. Back in the day, we wouldn't put Roundup on it and we wouldn't dry it like that. We'd stack it out in the fields and we'd let it dry naturally and it would get rained on and wet and it would start to break down and ferment on its own. So it was partially fermented. So it was easier for our bodies to digest. So is that one of the reasons why everybody's having a gluten sensitivity nowadays? The money's not there. People aren't gonna research it. We need to do it on our own. When a lot of people say, oh, there's no scientific studies. You know, it's my scientific study is how I feel. I can tell if we go out to eat now, because we still go out to eat every once in a while. We break the rules, we eat food we're not, we shouldn't eat, and we know better too. But it's a process. We all stumble, we all, it's a process. You're all gonna get there. The guy I was talking to, he still drinks Coke. I finally just kicked my soda habit. He was saying, I'm down to just one a day now. So he's happy with that, which is good. So we all have it. Don't feel bad if you do it. But where was I going? Let me think. I got off subject. Let's go to the other post. All right, we got our last post here to put insulators on. So I think that last conversation got kind of on a ramble again. I think where I was going with that is there's no science. There's not a lot of science and research behind the food and how you feel. People are all about the medical end of it and they want the science. The science to me is, is how I feel. Like I said, if we go out to dinner, I feel like crap the next day. If I have fried food, I feel terrible. And I know it, and it's from my food. I don't need the science behind it to tell me. I trust my gut and I can trust my body and know how I feel. Do you need science behind this to tell you how you feel and if this makes sense or not? I don't know. It's just how I am. I'm not really into the science of it. I don't trust science. The research can be manipulated to make it look the way they want it to look. That's the way I feel about that. So leave it in the comments down below. Let me know what you think. I kind of got off to a ramble today in the video, but this is why we're doing what we're doing. There's more to it than just wanting to raise our own animals. So let me know why you guys do it, and we'll see you right back here. These bugs are driving me crazy. And we'll see you right back here tomorrow at Lumna Acres, a guide to modern homesteading, self-sufficiency, and freedom. And we do it all for the food, for good, tasting, nourishing, Food! Woohoo! See you tomorrow.